Today we're exploring the vibrant city of Delhi, India. Known for its rich history, diverse culture, and delicious food, Delhi is a foodie's paradise. From the bustling street food stalls of Chani Chuk to glorious historical sites, Delhi has something to offer for every traveler. Get ready to experience the explosion of flavors in your mouth as I take you on the food experience of a lifetime. So join me as we explore the sights and cuisine of one of the world's top foodie cities, Delhi, India. Strap it, right? Yeah. Let me strap. So I couldn't use my my phone to get Uber, so I get to a taxi. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. I was told the fog here in Delhi is pretty brutal right now. Winter, as you can see, I mean, you can you can't see that far, but it's still in the morning. Luckily, later the sun will come out and it'll heat up a little bit. Right now, I'm going quickly to the Airbnb. I'm dropping everything off, and then I'm going to meet up with Millie. I've never heard this much honking in my life. <laughs> like honk, honk, honk. So just want to let you guys know, this is not fog. This is smog. Delhi has some of the worst smog in the world. Uh, they call it the Great Smog. The Great Smog, that's crazy. This is my place. What do we have here? I'm hungry. <laughs> oh my god, that thing survived. Very nice. As I mentioned earlier, I booked this place on Airbnb. It's a three bedroom in French Colony B10, West B10. That's a neighborhood. It's all houses. I'm on a third floor, three bedroom, very spacious for myself. Total cost was about 250 US dollars for three nights, uh, but I think it's definitely worth it. I mean, I didn't need this much, but it, it was one of the best places I found. Let's go meet with Millie and let's go eat. That's why you guys are watching, right? To go eat, let's go. <laughs> it is high speed train though. <laughs> <laughs> this area, Delhi hot and uh, clean, big, sexy, hot and cold, <laughs> good. This is Kanak place. This is Kanak place. Kanak place. This is like the heart of and Delhi, India. the heart of India. India and Delhi heart and we heart. <laughs> really. <laughs> A big this is the best Uber driver and, ever. And, and this flag, my country. So Millie. Hi. <laughs> What's up? What are we going to do today? Uh, uh, we are at CP, Kanak place. Okay, let's do something. Let's go eat something first. Eat something. Eat let's go eat. Yeah, actually, I'm starving. <laughs> so I want to eat street food. Whatever Same you guys food. want. We are going to Chani Chak today uh, for having a breakfast and uh, and, and Chani Chak is like moonlight. Moonlight. Moon like Chani Chak. In Hindi we call it Chani Chak. And Chak is market. Chak is like a crossing. Uh, exactly. Crossing. Chani Chak is Old Delhi, and we call it Delhi, Delhi Six. Delhi. Right? Delhi. Day six and we're gonna eat a lot of food right now. Oh, it's spicy. Oh, just give me anything, I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta say, the metro system here is insane. <laughs> it's chaotic. So, so easy. <laughs> Can't lose you, dude. Uh, you're staying with me. <laughs> We've entered Chani Chuk. As you can see, there's like a billion people everywhere. This is what's crazy right here. Oh my god, this is, this is wild. Get used to this crowd. <laughs> yeah, what is happening here? This is old Delhi. If you didn't know, Delhi is over 3,000 years old, roughly. Sheesh Ganj Gurdwara, Sheesh Ganj. Sikh temple, they call it Gurdwara. This is sensory overload. We're gonna eat some delicious prates. 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 Prates with prates. Some, some kind of curry. Uh, uh, Tattoo curry or... So this is the alley we're going into. Parathe wali curry and this is all the Yes sir. This? Oh my god. It's not Yeah, it's, it's very thin. I think it's like, what, 8 feet wide? I'm ready, I'm ready. Here? That's it? Is that what we're gonna eat right there? That's the prata. That's the prata. Prata That's the prata. Okay, that's the prata. Wala is the alley. It's like an alley. Okay. <laughs> Confusing. So we are eating those parathas. Okay. They are served with aloo and aloo, I mean tomatoes and uh, potatoes with uh, Indian spices. <laughs> so it's fried in the oil. So it's potatoes, the Indian spices, fried in oil. Yep. Okay. And then we get with curries and pickles. Yep. 
Oh, that's the curries? Yep. God, this is heaven. <laughs> First, he makes it into like a thin pancake in a way. <laughs> then he heats them up. Then they heat them up even more. Yep. Then they fry them. Millie, Hello. introduce yourself. That's My you friend Millie. Yeah. And I am from India, New Delhi, and we are at Chandni Chowk, Prate Wali Gali. We are going to eat parathas. Three types of food: Three. Alu, papad, and spice. Spicy. Mother papad paneer. Paneer? Okay, paneer one. <laughs> so, this is called thali. This is called thali. thali. This is uh, potato curry. Green chutney. Green chutney. Green chutney and that's red chutney with bananas. And this is another potato curry. And this is uh, I don't know, it looks amazing. <laughs> Green chili banana. And that's paneer. Uh, Rip it, put it in. Let's make it. With cottage cheese. This is the one with the banana. Make it. Oh my god. Mm. It's lassi. This is lassi. This is lassi. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> that is the best milk I've ever had in my life. Mm. Super sweet. Well, now I'm gonna try a little more with green chutney. Chutney. It's not a curry, but it's a chutney. Mm. Not so hot. Which is the hottest one? Try them on. This is the hottest one. It's a green chili. Oh, that's hot. It's a green chili one. This one's sweet. Kind of sweet and soft. I like the, the cottage cheese. Mm. I love this lassi. It's like a yogurt milk. Yogurt. Because it's thicker. It's thicker than milk. So this is the spicy one. This is green chili. Green chili. Potato that's heated up, then fried. Oh man. Spice it too really fast. <laughs> Let me just enjoy it. Mm. I'm gonna try this now. You gonna try the, the green pepper? Green pepper. Mm. <laughs> you need the, the milk. The lassi. Hello? <laughs> I have to go for the green chili. It's just, it's delicious, it's spicy. And too hot, and too hot. Very spicy. He's dying. <laughs> and he only had a piece. I'm like eating all of it. I'm done. <laughs> so am I. I think I need some more lassi. And each one of these is 60 rupee, a dollar ten cents. So we spent like seven, eight dollars. Not bad for three people. <laughs> okay, let's go to you. Chana Chuk is like a maze. It's, it's a maze. It's, it's a great maze. really a maze. And it's like this much. <laughs> oh my god. What is that? It's just a dark, that's a dark alley. Alley, you know, you know an alley. And there's like a million little shops. He's going to wreck a chori. It's okay. also a dish of potato and something. So it's fried potato, it's another fried potato. Kacholi. Alu kacholi. And so it's a fried potato with a few different sauces. There's a chili in there. And a million, other, a million other things I don't know. So how do I eat this? I just like go into like that? Just take a spoonful of it and just take it, huh? Just take it. Mm. Who, who knew fried potato could taste so good? I mean, you mix up all these chilies and it's just like, oh, I got, I got a real chili. Mm. Oh my God. The heat is really starting to come on though. I'm gonna take a huge bite. The flavor's in here. It's not sweet at all though. It's, it's really, it's really spicy. hot, it's spicy. It's spicy. I can't keep eating. That was really crunchy, tasty, but it's so hot, my mouth is on fire. Like, ah! I need more lassi. We're gonna go uh, get some jalebis. The famous uh, Chani Chowk jalebis. And after that, Faluda. Faluda. Yeah. Okay, so this is the Gura, Guradwara temple. It's a Sikh temple. And it is, uh, it's not the biggest one in India. No. But it's one of the biggest. One of the biggest, one yeah. Of. Try to walk for like 20 feet in <laughs> Old Delhi without getting bumped. Everybody pushes you. It's like... They want to get there. <laughs> they want Everybody want to get bumped there. Next time we're trying is Joe Lebi, which is like a fried dough. He's gonna fry right here, 
then they move it on over there and they put sugar on it. What's that? Uh, honey. It's kind of honey. It's like a kind of honey? But made of sugar. Okay. It's only sugar. And then I see all these guys have it with, with like some cream. God, fuck you. So here we have it. The jelly bee. The jelly bee. It's like fried dough, they put it into honey and then it has this sauce. What sauce is it? Rubbery. 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 It's a milk product. Milk product. Milk product. Yeah. Okay. How do I do it? Just, just break it and eat it. Mmm. Sweet. Super sweet. I'm gonna record it too. <laughs> it tastes almost like an elephant ear at the, at the fair. A lot of sugar on that. This is part of the fattiest thing we got though. <laughs> Extremely rich in sugar though. Too mm. much. Mm. If you don't like sweets, you're not gonna like this, but and if you're on a diet, you can't have this. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's a big bite. Mm. Nice. <laughs> it's a little too sweet. Yeah. It's it's the the, the most extreme sweet I've had. Exactly. Mm. Very yummy. So much sugar. <laughs> Even in China, I didn't see this many people. In Shanghai, there wasn't this many people. This market is also famous for marketing. Bride and groom's dresses. One is there. They dresses many things like jewelry and all. <laughs> this is so insane. Now we're going to see one of the most important forts in India. It's called the Red Fort. What do we know about the Red Fort? It is made by Shah Jaha. It's made by Shah Jaha. Exactly. We're trying to cross the Red Fort and it's a little hectic. I almost got on. I almost got on. This is the Red Fort. It was constructed by Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in the year 1628. It took over 30 years to build, and it's the, the fort of the seventh city of Delhi. Delhi has been built over and over and over as people came in, destroyed it, got built just like Rome, same thing. And unfortunately, the fort's closed until February 1st, and I leave in three days, so. But it's beautiful. You guys gotta come here and take some photos. Anything else? No. You know it. Right? Wow. Tree tea. This is chai tea that is Indian tea. And the way that this guy does it is that he boils the water, throws a tea in, throws some ginger in, then nukes the water. Literally, it's boiling. It's about to burst. And then he pours it out. And here we have the tea. It's really nice. It's refreshing. I'm super jet lagged. I haven't slept, but it's really good to keep me going. It will help a lot. I think so. Mm. I'm crashing here in this little bench. It looked to her science like chaos. We're going to Gyanis Faluda next. And it's really delicious. It's kind of uh, boiled noodles with uh, rabdi. Boiled noodles with rabdi. With rabdi. It's a milky product. Again, every, everything here has milk in it. Everything has a bit. <laughs> Potatoes, <laughs> milk, spices, <laughs> and sugar. <laughs> We're just like fighting to get through here. Either you die or you win. <laughs> Do I get in here? Let's sit in front. So there's a the rickshaw and the reason we're getting on one is because it's a little far and there's too many people to, to keep walking. And we are quite tired now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're pretty destroyed, but as you can see, this is like it's just insanity. I, you know, there's 11 million plus people in Delhi, and I think like a third of them are here right now. <laughs> hey, hey, where are you going? Where are you going? Yeah. Here we are. All right, so this is sweet faluda, right? Yeah, sweet faluda. So it's boiled noodles with. Uh, I don't know, it looks like a, a creamy, pasty sauce. Mm, tastes like a rice, a ricey yogurt with ice. Another really fatty dish. <laughs> it's fantastic though, I love it. This will be perfect in summer when it's like boiling out here. 
You get this, you can, you know, refresh yourself. It's thick. It's thick. But it's really nice. So we're going back to Kanat Kanat place. Yes. And what are we gonna try there? We are going to try fire pan. Fire pan. It's crazy. It's just, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen on YouTube. Get ready, get ready. Yes. So where's the fire pan? Where is it? It's a long walk. What? Long walk? No. You yeah, it is a lot. Come on. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So basically everywhere you look, there's somebody selling something here. Like mini market here, like you have jewelry, you have lipstick, they have cosmetics. Fire pan. It's made of a pan leaf, uh, pan leaf and a sweet sugary uh, gum with ice and uh, it's like vitrol or petrol or I don't know. That's a blue thing. <laughs> so it's like a leaf that was on fire. Shove it in your mouth and it's like all smoky. It's also cold with ice in it. Huh? So that's fire pan. I just did it right now for the vlog, but it's insane. It's like a smoky ass leaf going in your mouth. Icy, chewy, gooey, gummy. Gooey. <laughs> it is. It's like, it's like everything. It's like crazy. <laughs> it's like smoke. <laughs> So the last thing I'm gonna try is ice pan. Okay, dude, what is this? All right. Oh. 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 <laughs> brain fruit. I told you, man. It's gonna piece your brain. Once the ice melts, it's very nice. Oh, it's very nice. Very nice. It's like a mint. Mint. Mint, right? It's like shove it in my mouth. <laughs> you have to wait for the ice to melt, and you get this like intense amount of mint mm, in the pan. It's a nice leaf. So that's it. That's it. That's our tour. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you loved it, please give this video a thumbs up. And share it too. If you share it for sure. It's <laughs> important. If you've been to India or Delhi, please leave a comment below where you've been, what you ate, and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. Thanks, guys. You're welcome, man. Thank you. <laughs>
Stupendous. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Mata. Matar samosa. Matar samosa. Usually it's stuffed with mashed potatoes. Here they make it with green peas. It's really hot. It looks like a wonton. It's fresh. Oh, it's nice. It's still really hot though. This side. Green peas, a lot of curries. Very hot, as you can see. It reminds me of a wonton curry and green peas. Delicious. The jelly bee. Fried dough, they put it into honey and then it has this sauce. What sauce is this? Do you know? Milk product. Okay. Uh, it, here they serve with condensed milk, like the third one which you had, from yeah. the condensed milk. Asia's largest silver jewelry street. So both the sites here have silver jewelry shops here. The name of this dish is Dollar Ki Char. This is something which you get only in Old Delhi and only in the winter's month. Only for six months, that too only in Old Delhi. And the name is different in different cities. Here we call it Dollar Ki Char. If you translate it into English, it means snack of wealth. This is called the wealthy dish. Mm. Yeah, it's basically just like whipping cream, just powdered sugar. Pistachios. Pist oh, yeah, I was gonna say, it's like some nuts in here. Very fluffy. You get a lot of weight in India, right? <laughs> I love it. By the way, that was probably my favorite dessert so far that I've had. Now we are like going towards the food heaven. The one thing I haven't tried is any dishes with me. Oh. So this is like, like now we're jumping into it. So we're walking by the store and Anubhav is like, this store is over 200 years old and they're famous for incense. Yeah, incense and perfume oils, essential oils. Now we are entering towards Jama Masjid, Batia Man, and all the non-vegetarian food shops are here. And you get the best of non-vegetarian food in Delhi, fried chicken, butter chicken, biryani. The Hindus are vegetarian, okay. but uh, Hindus also eat meat. Yeah. They eat goat, they eat chicken. It's the main street of Jama Masjid called Matiya Mahal. But we'll fall, first walk on this street for the kebabs. You get chicken kebabs, you get mutton kebabs, and you get buffalo kebabs. Buffalo kebabs? Yeah, yeah, buffalo. I I've never had buffalo kebab. Chaos at its finest. I mean, I mean, <laughs> food heaven. Chicken, mutton, buff, how much one you want? A mix of all A mix. I'm gonna try a chicken, a mutton, and a buffalo kebab. These kebabs look out of this world. Look at this. You know buffalo? So here we have the buffalo kebab. That's chicken kebab. Chicken kebab. Mm, so tender, very soft. That's mutton. My God, is this all for me? Yeah, all for you. I love the mix between the spices and then this sauce. Yeah, that's yogurt. I didn't know it was yogurt. Did taste the yogurt in? Oh, kebab heaven right here. Chicken's fantastic. The buffalo has a little different taste. I never eat buffalo, so very different. And this is mutton. No, have it. Oh, that's my favorite. You can see it's rich in spices. It's flaming right now. It's still boiling in my hand. Mm. These are the best kebabs I've ever had in my life. But that was out of this world. Out of this world. I've never seen this many people in my life in one area. The name of this bread is Khamiri Roti. The word Khamir means yeast. So they add yeast in it and the refined flour, then they are baked. The restaurant we're at is called Al Jawahar and basically they serve Mughali food. Mughalai? Mughalai food. So they say this is the best in all of Delhi. Right? We are going to try here chicken barra and mutton korma with khamiri roti. Okay, so what do we have here? This is mutton korma. Okay, yes. so goat curry. Okay. So lentils cooked with chicken and this is goat curry. This bread looks delicious. Okay. Sauce over it. So chicken, lentils, there's so many dishes. A little spicy, there's black pepper, okay. And there's the goat curry, gotta break it up. Oh, it's a bone, right? Mmm, wow. The goat curry, the sauce, so rich. This is how locals do it. Mmm, fall off the bone. So tender, a lot of fat, but it's juicy fat. I mean, my favorite part was just doing this. This is mutter paneer. It's cottage cheese with green peas. This is like paneer, cottage cheese, and then you have green peas here. Cooked in tomato and onion gravy. All the grease. It's a good call, that. <laughs> Definitely need all this bread, though. You know, 
It's funny, everybody thinks that Indian food is very spicy. I feel like Thai food is way worse. Oh, okay, I have a little spot there. <laughs> it's chicken. Oh my god. It's just like out of nowhere, it just comes up. So next up, we're going to the oldest fried chicken joint in Delhi, over 45 years old. Call it like JFC, Jama Masjid Fried Chicken. <laughs> there are few restaurants in Old Delhi which are meant for homeless people. And there people come and buy them a meal. The meal price is fixed 20 rupees per person. In 20 rupees they get some two breads and some curry to eat. It's a very good thing which where people donate the food. So that's our Indian Colonel Sanders. So he sells fried chicken here. It's like 45 years old shop. The oldest fried chicken shop in Delhi. They have five floors. They sell fried chicken and fried fish. That's it. It's very basic like it's chicken. They put it in a batter of chickpea flour with eggs and spices. Then they are deep fried. See, the chicken, it's fried, but it looks like a light batter. So it's not like too thick. No, no, it's thick, yeah. Very nice. Here you go. So which we should I try first? This, try this one. Just that? Take it like a drumstick. Is it really hot? Take it from this side. Take it from this side. Okay. Still scorching hot, because it just came out of that. <laughs> too hot, too hot. Mm. But it's better hot. It's like, this chicken, you know it was murdered today. <laughs> what this? This is like a spicy sauce. This Not is like, so spicy. Yeah, this is like yellow chilies with dry mango powder. This is blowing away any fried chicken I ever had. Dude, it's just so fresh, so real. Mmm, that crunch. Very little fat. I need to slow down, but I can eat this whole thing. Uh, you have to save space. Yeah, Next I know. Next year, we have butter chicken. Butter chicken? Yeah. Finally, yeah. finally. And that kind of butter chicken you won't get anywhere in India. It's very special to that place. Throughout India, everywhere they use tomatoes as a base for butter chicken. The place where we are going, they don't use tomatoes. They don't use tomatoes? No tomatoes in butter chicken. It's like literally chicken and butter. We call it butter chicken. Or you can call it butter and chicken. Butter and chicken. Let's go have some butter and chicken. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ooh, it's boiling. Still. So here we have the best butter chicken in India. They don't use tomatoes, just literally butter and chicken. I'm gonna go with a small piece because this is still really hot. Oh my God. This is a heart attack with chicken. The chicken tastes like chicharron, like a pork rinds, because it's really crunchy. And as you can see, it's like bathed in butter. I didn't know there was bones, but there's bones here. Mm. This is out of this world. Where'd you bring me to? I guess I'll have another piece, right? Have to. Go, I'll stay here. <laughs> Mouth-watering chicken. I don't like butter, I like oil. But this butter is really smooth. They're making biryani here, so they cook the meat separately and rice separately. And they do the layering. So at the bottom they add the layer of meat, then you have rice, pickles, and everything is mixed together. He is the chef here. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Watching them make that biryani was incredible. I've never seen that done. Mind blowing. Rice pudding. Rice, pistachio, and milk. It's definitely like a rice pudding. Yeah, it's rice pudding. You can find a rice pudding as well. Mm. Oh man, with the pistachios. Dude, what are you doing to me? I love it. I think you guys make a little twist with the pistachios. I'm gonna hold off. Riding on a rickshaw. It's just, it's too crowded right now. I think yeah. it's gonna take us longer with the rickshaw over walking. We should have walked. Next, we are going to a vegetarian restaurant where we'll try a bread made up of chickpea flour. And then we'll try some dal as well. This is Chavri Bazaar. This is Asia's largest wedding invitation card market. Asia's largest wedding invitation card market. I didn't even know that existed. And right here we have all the paper. Yeah. What is this? This is a restaurant. This is a restaurant. This is a restaurant? This restaurant is like a tiny staircase. I didn't even see it. And this is a restaurant. 
the name of this restaurant is Shakahari restaurant and it's like all vegetarian menu. We have ordered two dishes. Well, I have ordered a bread called Besni. But the bread is made with chickpea flour. It's a gluten free bread. Then I have ordered Malai Kofta. Malai is like uh, cream. So it's like the, the it's like dough, uh, the ball is made up of cream. So Malai Kofta and chickpea flour yeah. bread. So we can call it like vegetarian ball strike of paneer. Yeah. 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 Very like, it feels like a cracker yeah. in a way. I like it, but the chicken and the, and the fried chicken. So it's like a bread. Put all together, what do you got? Bread with. <laughs> We were discussing it like you're in tired Oh, it's coffee shop in Delhi? Kulfi. Kulfi, Kulfi. Tomorrow we'll have, morning we'll have shine. Kulfi shop here, the oldest Kulfi shop in Delhi. And uh, the real classic Indian Kulfi flavor is saffron, pistachios and caramel. But over the years they have added more flavors in the menu. And this shop is like mostly known for weddings and parties. So people come and order in bulk. So they sample the flavors and then they order in bulk. And they deliver all over India, they, can, they, can, they deliver all over the world as well. So I'm gonna get one of each. I mean, it looks like an ice cream, but like more frozen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And this is the classic right the classic here. Ming saffron, yeah. pistachio. It's like a mix between a sorbet and an ice cream. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I feel. That was a list of flavor. There's mango. Wow. Just like mango. That was sorbet, right? That was like straight sorbet. Lychee. Mm. Yeah, pomegranate. I mean, by far my favorite is the original. Is that what Yeah. That's the authentic. And this is the same thing? Like the same thing twice? Yeah, same thing. And I like how it's just like this. You don't have to mix it with anything. Yeah. Mystery flavor. Wow. I didn't even know this existed. This, this for you? This for you. So you try it and guess it, like which flavor it is. Man, it looks like like three or four different things in here. Mm -hmm. Try and guess the flavor, like the ingredients. Are. Mint? Mint is there. I don't know, a lot of Indian different things. <laughs> rose? Huh? Rose is there. Yeah. Rose, okay. Dried rose petals are there. Yeah. yeah, it's like beetle leaf. This one right here. Yeah, that's a beetle leaf. It's a very refreshing uh, thing, like normally people eat it after the meal. It's definitely acquired taste upon it. Yeah, it's very good. Either you love it or you hate it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love it. <laughs> This is actually my favorite now. Favorite? Yeah, because I mean, it's, many flavors hit you, you it's know? It's the taste of India. Like, mm -hmm. It's the real taste of India. Is that what I was saying? It's like, I taste it and I'm like, yeah. I'm going back to India. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's my first time here. <laughs> <laughs> you overdid it with this. Really? Just like first day. You have to eat next nine days. <laughs> nine days? Yeah, 17. Yeah, yeah. 17 in India? 18 total. 18 days. So you have to eat every day, you'll have to eat. Like, oh my god. Food. That was an incredible Indian street food tour of Old Delhi. When you guys visit Delhi, definitely check out Delhi Food Walks. They have some of the best street food tours in the city. My favorite two things were the butter chicken and the fried chicken. They were out of this world. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. See you on the next adventure. Good morning from foggy, beautiful Delhi, India. This is David Hoffman of David's Been Here. And today I'm headed on a breakfast street food tour of Old Delhi with Anubhav from Delhi Food Walks. This is my first real morning in India, so I haven't had breakfast street food yet. I know it's gonna be mouth-watering and delicious, full of flavors. Let's get to Old Delhi. I'm Anubhav Sapra from Delhi Food Box, and I've been doing tour, food tours in Delhi for the past seven years. We're gonna eat a lot. Yesterday we ate a lot, but today we're gonna eat more. <laughs> <laughs> we are going on a full-on breakfast tour today, and we are going to stop at nine places to taste the traditional breakfast in Old Delhi. I mean, this is delicious. It's sweet. So the tea cost 10 rupees. So this old Delhi, it dates back to like the 6th century BC and this area is called the Chanachak area. This is the 
craziest place to go. It's like, it's unorganized chaos. This is amazing. This is like the cable. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, just, I never see, you know? Now, we, we are walking in the lane, this, the name of this lane is Chavri Bazaar. We are walking to the first food stop. The name of the street, uh, shop is Shyam Sweets. And uh, they make two dishes in the breakfast. They have a dish called Bedmi Puri. It's basically a puff bread stuffed with lentils and then they uh, serve with a potato curry and chickpeas. In fact, on Sundays, only on Sundays, they make pumpkin. Then second, we are going to try Nagori Halwa. It's a pudding made up of semolina in clarified butter with saffron, pistachios and almond. So we are going to try two dishes at the first food stop. This shop was established in 1910, like more than 100 years old shop. <laughs> this is our first stop. We're stopping at nine places. Just like yesterday. <laughs> nine? I thought it was five. <laughs> and nine places and some of them have two like this one. Oh, gotta come with a real empty stomach because I, I need to buy a second stomach. <laughs> you get only on Sundays the pumpkin I was telling you about. So this you get only on Sundays. <laughs> No, it's not good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have baby me puri. Oh, still smoking hot. Pumpkin or potato curry. Mmm. It's a light curry, you know? So here we have potato curry. Mmm. It's very soft. Still packed with flavor. Mmm. So this one's the chickpeas and chole. Yeah. We have something called hada. Mmm. I like that one. Chickpeas is actually really hot. That's what I like. <laughs> it doesn't feel like too fried, you know? It's like a light fry. So this is called nagori halwa. So this halwa is like a pudding. It's made up of semolina, clarified butter, saffron, sugar, and almonds. And the way you eat it is like you hollow this out, then you stuff the halwa inside this puff bread, and then you eat it. Delicious. So we have to open it. Stop it. Oh, look at it, just let it right there. Perfect. Oh my god, it's delicious. Super sweet. I love spicy. This is next? Yeah, we had it yesterday also. Oh, okay. It's fresh or you can try it. The name of this dress is Dalat Ki Chart. And if you literally translate it into English, it means snack of wealth. And this you get only in the winter's month because the summers it can't survive the heat. It's made up of milk and cream. They churn it together. It takes almost five hours to make this much. So what they do is that they keep churning the milk and cream and then the foam is formed. They collect that foam, over it they add some saffron, pistachios and powdered sugar. And you get at the bottom also they keep it over a brick of ice if you see here. Wow. Otherwise it will melt. That's why you get it. Thank you. Dola Kichar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had this yesterday, but it's like a creamy milk. Uh, it takes five hours to make it. This is like a super fluffy, delicious dessert. Mmm, super light. It's fantastic. It's basically like whipped cream. That's what it feels like. Whipped cream with pistachios on top. Oh my god. One for the gold. Very sweet. Very sweet, right? Very sweet. Creamy. To me, it's like whipped cream. Yeah, whipped cream with pistachios. You say the word chart. Like the word chart is always used for savory dish, like a savory snack, but it's an exception. Although we call it a chart, but it's like a dessert. BYOB. Bring your own butter. So everyone brings their own butter to that place. So we are going to have chole kulche. Chole is just chickpeas. And kulchas are white flour baked bread. So it's a very popular dish you get all over Delhi, outside offices, outside universities, outside colleges. Everyone eats it for morning and the afternoon as a lunch as well. And the place where we are going, that's more than 90 years old shop. And he's there only in the morning hours from 7.30 to 10.30. After that he moves out from there. So it's very special. Bring your own butter. <laughs> BYOB. BYOB. So if you see like it's like a food festival happening there. So people are standing. On Sundays they set up two stalls, one for takeaways and one for eating out here. Okay. So this is a big pot of chickpeas, then you have red chili oil, then dry mango powder, sauce like sauce of dry mango powder, then you have black salt. So here we have a kulcha chole. So chickpeas, it's a little spicy, potato in there, 
It's mixed with a big piece of butter. And then right next to it, we have a piece of bread. So it's Charlie the School Chap. I love that we're in a super small alley and this is like super hidden. So just scoop at this. Mmm. I think I need a bigger bite. <laughs> oh my god. So if you ever had a dish that is completely filled with butter, this is it. But it's delicious, it's spicy. Mm. The chickpeas. The butter's out of control, man. <laughs> so there's red chili, cilantro, that ginger. There's a lot of things in this. <laughs> mm. What's impressive is how much you taste the butter. It's like overwhelming almost, you know? This is one of my favorite dishes that we had in these past two days. Mmm. The spicy. It's mean and spicy. <laughs> it packed a mean punch because right now I'm like boiling. <laughs> That's only two places so far. Yeah. We still got seven to go. <laughs> I mean, luckily the portions aren't giant, but still, I mean, nine places. Now we are going for some meat. We are going to try Nahari. That's a slow cooked meat. Whole night in the morning they eat us a breakfast and then we'll try paya. That's the goat feet. Goat feet? Yeah, that's what we're going to try. What? <laughs> Four years old restaurant. Karim. Yeah, this whole place belongs to the same restaurant. I said anywhere you get the same food. And the name of this lane is Gali Kebab here. That means street of kebabs. So they said that when Mughals were ruling in Delhi, there used to be many kebab sellers here. Now only this restaurant exists. And in the morning they have only two dishes in non vegetarian they have only two dishes in breakfast. They have a dish called Nahari. And that's Nahari is derived from a word called Nahar that itself means morning. So this is like a meat which is cooked overnight on low flame and in the morning they eat as a breakfast. They goat curry you can call it as well. And then they have paya, that's goat feet. So on the streets you'll get uh, buffalo feet, but here it's like mutton, goat, goat feet. And then we'll have uh, in Beijing they have aloo matter sir. This is aloo matter and this the meat is all for you. <laughs> That's the Nahari, this is Paya, and that's Alu Matar. Goat feet, goat curry. So curry. This is green peas and potato and tomato. Yeah. All three, all three of them. <laughs> oh, okay. so this is for me? So I'm going to start with the goat feet. And then here we have goat curry. Nice piece of goat right there. Looks spicy, right? Bread. Best bread ever. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, it's like normally the way they make it is like that's a sauce. Yeah, it's very tender, like I really like it. And especially this is like one of the best goats I've ever had. It's just like melting mm -hmm. in your mouth. And this is this this meat is they also call it workman's meat. And then you go for it, just go at it. Yeah, it's more like gelatin and fat. Mmm. Yeah, a lot of fat here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the bone marrow, right? Mmm. Wow, delicious. <laughs> it's actually very nice. The goat feet, you think goat foot and you're like, you know, but yeah, yeah. it's just a piece of bone with fat on top. Oh my god. This is like amazing actually. I should call Kareem's goat heaven because of how delicious both those dishes were. This place is coming to life right now. You can see it's packed. Probably triple the people that there were half an hour ago. A lot more people now. Yeah, yeah. Actually, being a Sunday, they wake up a bit late. Yeah. But like half an hour ago, yes. there was no one. And now it's like. That yesterday, we couldn't walk here. Okay. Like, you're just like. And your sweet bread. This is, this is like a bread shop only. Okay. And uh, in the morning, we have two breads called Lakha Paratha. It's a salty bread, and the Shrima is a sweet bread. Okay. So, okay. you try the Shrima. The dough is made with milk. Sugar and cardamom. Sweet one? It's a sweet bread, yeah. They call it sheer mal. Sheer mal? Yeah, sheer mal. The sheer is sweet, the sheer mal. No, too sweet. Yeah, yeah. That's why I thought the next one was going to be like extremely sweet, but no, it's good, it's good. Mm. This is rabdi. Rabdi is like condensed milk. So you keep boiling the milk and keep removing the cream from the top. That's what he's doing. Like he's cutting the cream from the top. And then he will add sugar inside it like a rabdi. What's our next stop? Next we are going for biryani. Biryani? Biryani. And uh, we'll try, there are two different kinds of biryani. They have buffalo biryani and then they have chicken biryani. Okay. So they have two pots lying out here, right next here. People are having it. 
perfect. So biryani is basically meat with rice on top. Yeah. So what they do is at the bottom they cook the meat separately and then the rice separately. At the bottom is a layer of meat. Then you have rice. Then pickles and then mix it all of them together. Buffalo, Indian heaven. Heaven <laughs> again. And my friends all vegetarians here. I'm the only one that's not a vegetarian. I haven't had buffalo biryani before. It looks really rich in like a sauce yeah, yeah. here. Mmm. That is delicious. Good. Yeah, man. Uh, they cook the meat mm -hmm. and then they put the layer of rice over it. This, this yellow color mm -hmm. is because of saffron they added. Because of saffron, okay. Yeah, they put saffron in everything, so. And then you have whole spices. You can see the cloves as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Also, beef, cardamom, all of that. Has a lot of bone, so it's hard to get into. We just gotta break it up, mix up. Some rice, some buffalo. No. Oh. Wow. Good. Yeah. Uh, okay. Done? I'm done. Okay. I mean, let's go with my hands, yeah, right? Yeah. That's the way the locals eat. Yeah, yeah. That's how you have to eat. <laughs> mm. Wow. I've never eaten this much buffalo before. And the fat right there, all that gelatin. Mmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Next stop? I don't know. My stomach's too full already. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Have jalebi. We tried the jalebi yesterday at the that place and you can compare that taste. I find it better than the last. That we had yesterday at the jalebi place, but it was better than that. Jalebi is basically make a batter of white flour, then they deep fry it in clarified butter in ghee. Once it is fried, they dip it into sugar syrup. That's jalebi. It's like a super sweet elephant ear. If you ever had elephant ear in the States, this is extremely rich in sugar. It's really good, but another really fine dish. So the difference between the ones I had yesterday on the Night Street food tour and this is that these are smaller and they're crispier. They look delicious, very sugary, very sweet. This is my boy right here. <laughs> Crispy and sweet. Good. So here are the jalebi, crispy, sugary, mm. extremely sweet. Oh. Okay, we will have chai, and then uh, we'll we'll go to a place for chickpeas and a fried bread, chole bhature. This is like Starbucks. <laughs> this is like Starbucks <laughs> with no Wi-Fi. <laughs> This is, so this is one of the oldest tea shops in all of Delhi. It's 70 years old. Yeah, gas or kerosene, they boil it very fast. That's what they are going to eat, like the chole bature. Chole bature. Yeah, chole is again chickpeas, and the baturas are the fried bread. Eat like two chilies and then you eat the bread. <laughs> so we have chole bature, chickpeas with this bread. Ready? Ready? We're breaking bread together. <laughs> like that, you open it up and then you go in. Yeah, that's the way you do it. That's the way you're supposed to do it, right? Oh, look at that. Chickpeas. Mmm. You savor every flavor. And now I'm gonna try a green chili. No. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Right? Bread is also soft. Yeah, the bread's very soft. And here in India, I guess you guys do like sort of like a taco. You just split it up with whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's the kind of Okay. Nice Indian taco. Mmm. Very tasty. Big old. As the saying goes, deli belly. <laughs> <laughs> now after all those delicious dishes, we're headed for the sweets. We're gonna try five different sweets and some lassi. It's probably the most real you can get in India is Old Delhi. Spice market here. The real name of this place is Bauli. But before the years people have started calling it Spice Market. So they are known for their spices, then they have tea, and then you get dry fruit. Dry nuts here. Prices, you were saying, these prices are for one kilo. Black cardamom, cloves, gooseberry candy, then there's dried lentil cakes, dried coconut, uh, cumin, black pepper, turmeric, coriander. It's a wholesale flower market here. So you have like three different kinds of flower here. You have marigold, then you have rose, and then daisy. 24 hours. 24 hours it operates. In fact, it's more busy early morning around 4 o'clock. Smells amazing. The biggest one in Asia, right? 
No, this sound like a donation. I'm not saying. Ice maker is So the tradition is whoever comes through here, he gives them a flower. Oh, it smells amazing. Yeah. It smells like a lychee. Uh, the name of this shop is China Ram Sweet Shop. This shop was started in 1901. In 1947, they moved from Pakistan to India and started this shop at this place. That's the best sweet shop in Delhi. Like they have they're known for their Karachi halwa. It's a sticky, chewy halwa made with starch and pistachios. And uh, then we'll have sea badam that's made with a chickpea flour. Then we'll have cashew burpee. Then we'll have coconut burpee. And we'll try um, the winter delicacy. They have only the winter sign, like dal halwa. Which one are these? This is coconut that's made up of chickpea flour. Something which you get only around this Holi festival, not throughout the year. Now the Holi is coming next month. That's, that's coconut burpee. Mm. Coconut. This is what they are known for. It's like it's uh, Karachi halwa. Karachi halwa. The statue is in starch, burpee. Uh, in fact, uh, it's very similar to Turkish delight. The only difference mm. is that in Turkish delight, they don't add ghee. Here we add ghee in it. It's a Turkish delight. Turkish delight. This is baklava. Yeah. It's a really good baklava. It's not, we call it uh, bujia, but it's not baklava. Same to me. <laughs> We're about to end our food tour with some lassi at the best lassi shop in all of Old Delhi. They have like six different flavors of lassi here. They have mango, that's seasonal, that's because that's, that's why it's not available. They have malai, that's a plain cream lassi, banana, namkeen jira is cumin and salt, kesar badam is saffron almond, rosam is rose almond. Lassi is like a yogurt based oh. drink, saffron, you can add banana, you can add mango. This is malai, the plain lassi. The plain Just lassi. with sugar, that's it, no flavors. This is yours. It's like a meal in itself, a yeah. like complete meal in itself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is the perfect thing to have after you eat spicy food because it like helps your stomach just relax. Mm. Straight up yogurt. Mm. It's extremely thick, man. Mm. Thank you, dude. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the tour. I'm like, I feel like I'm in a food coma right now. I'm just really enjoying this. It's really nice, but I'm just gonna leave this because. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed this breakfast food tour. My favorite thing was personally the goat feet. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah I loved it. How was but, the chickpeas? Chickpeas. Chickpeas were good, but the goat feet and the goat curry was really just like the top for me. Ish. That's not really for breakfast in my opinion. I think lunch, but it's good. That's what they. Eat. I love the lassi. I mean, I liked everything in general, but the goat. So guys, if you love this video and you're coming to Delhi, please give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment below. Check out Delhi Food Walks if you want to try this tour. It's a must. Remember, come here with an empty stomach because you're really going to pop. All right? Hey, thank you so much. Thank you. I'll give you a hug, man. Give me a hug. It's my brother right here. Okay. Subscribe you. to my channel and see more of Incredible India. <laughs> That's how we say it. What's up, bro? What's up, man? How are you doing? Good, you? Good. Uh, this is Abhay. I work for Two's Bar Locals, and uh, I'm here to meet David because he recommended me. <laughs> <laughs> and today he's gonna take me on an attraction tour. We're also gonna eat, but I'm gonna face myself today. Why don't I take you on a walk towards the history of India? We'll just highlight a bit of everything. In a saying, very popular saying, which goes in India, that goes that after every 50 kilometer. The people change, their religious change, their food change, and their language change after every 50 kilometers. So it's after like every 50? 50. 50. That's a saying which goes around. It's unity in diversity. That's what India is all about. You see the mix of people from different race, religion, different culture, ethnicity, and how they are living together. It's amazing under one roof. Uh, we are walking uh, through Chandni Chowk. Uh, which is an old Delhi. Previously, also Shah Jahanabad, because of the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan, who shifted his capital from Agra to Delhi. This was the area where the last Mughal ruled, the Red Fort, Bahadur Shah Jafar. Yeah, he was. So Chandni Chowk is a mix of people. So here you have different street food from old India to the tradition one. Uh, you have, might have tried this wedding market where all the bridles and grooms come to shop. 
there's a shop coming uh, where you will see traditional bridal clothes for bride and groom. There is uh, a Silver Street market, and uh, which is where you can buy, purchase silver, gold, as well as there is a Spice Market, the Asia largest one. So it's a mix of everything from old to new. We kept some history with us and we developed a new project which you see around. Okay, this is a Gurdwara, a religious place for Sikhs. Uh, it's one of the community in India where they come and pray and offer. And this place serves food to millions of people every day. So they are the, one of the most humblest community people. And there's the biggest kitchen in every Gurdwara you will find. So in Sikh religion, you can't cut your hair. Nope. So you also have the turban yes. on, right? Uh, yes, you can't uh, cut your hairs uh, anywhere in the body. So that's why they have turban, so that they can collect their hair. And that's why they have a super long beard and yes, everything. Yes, that's true. So never cut their hair. Never cut their hair. And then to go into the temple, you have to take your shoes off and wash your feet. As you can see, everybody's doing that right there. So that shop is like two feet wide. <laughs> <laughs> Behind me, there's a red foot which was built by Akbar in the 16th century as well as served as the last uh, house for the Mughal Emperor in 1857. So it's a very interesting and most important building in India as well as during independence the President of India as well as the Prime Minister they came here and delivered a speech. On every 15th August you will see Red Fort on TV. <laughs> That's nice but... It's a Meena Bazaar uh, in Old Delhi. Uh, here you will see people selling blankets, cotton uh, goods, cotton made shirts, as well as the rugs which you just pass by behind. So right now we're about to see the biggest mosque in all of India. Jama Masjid. On a very given day uh, during Eid, almost 25,000 people can sit inside the courtyard of this mosque. It was again built by Mughal, uh, Shah Jah, and it was built with white and red sandstones. It was built somewhere around about 17th century when the Mughal came over here. Less expensive clothes, you know? Less expensive, yeah. So I heard, so this is a Sunday market that's yes. right in front of the mosque. And here I heard you can find basically anything, even iPhones. Yes, that's true. The, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close my pocket so no one takes anything. <laughs> Maybe your iPhone will you will find <laughs> yeah, yourself right? someone selling. Wow, look at this. You know, getting things. You can easily get a pair of jeans for all five dollars. Even for yourself. Yeah. I want an Indian hat. Where's the Indian hat at? So that lets me blend in. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Uh, this is all the dry fruits which we which is very popular, like cashew, pistachio, almonds, walnuts. And they sell it over here to all the people at a very low price. I'm not sure of uh, from where they get it, whether it's stolen or they purchase it. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> but for sure, at least you would get it. Just give it. So they're saying that most of these vendors here, not all of them, but a lot of them, steal. Yes. And then sell. But again, you you can't say which one is stolen and which one which is selling a stolen goods or which is selling a purchase goods. This, it's this, a mix. This is the reality, guys. Yes. So. Pretty good. This is intense. So many people. So good. Where'd you go? <laughs> so you were telling me it's like a hundred thousand people right here in this little area. That's true. Every, all of them are here to shop. Either the stolen goods or the new ones. You could see here people are selling watches, adapters, clothes. I mean, you can find everything, everything. here. Clothing, shoes, backpacks, carpet. Yes, and the shoes. <laughs> uh, man, this is it's overwhelming, actually. How do we get out of here? Tuk tuk. Tuk tuk. Let's go by Metro. We're going to take the Metro and go where? What's our next destination? The next destination would be India Gate and Rashtrapati Bhavan. And India Gate. India Gate and Rashtrapati Bhavan. Uh, in English, it would be the President House, Rashtrapati Bhavan. Yeah, the New Delhi was uh, designed by Edward Luton and Henry Baker in 1930s when the British was here. Yeah. So this is Old Delhi and the New Delhi would be really, you will see the structures, marvelous structure made by the Britain. A stone of architect, architects. Okay, you have to get the tickets. Yeah, so yesterday I, I went here uh -huh. and it was so packed to get in to the metro. Like when you get out, when you try to get out, uh -huh. people push you in and you're like... <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the busiest uh, stations 
uh, as you know till now that there are many markets people like to visit. Yeah. Uh, whether it's for street food or shopping, uh, doing uh, shopping for their wedding or get some spices, you know. We're going to the India Gate on a yes. tuk And is it your first time you're riding? This one actually, yes. First time riding this one. Oh, okay. Well, this is comfortable. <laughs> Bad on no. the rickshaw? I'm going to sleep, dude. <laughs> New Delhi, you know, which is clean, not as congested as the old one. You will see the lanes, some beautiful roundabouts, and the nice buildings around, you know. So, a lot more organized this part. Yes. So, this is India Gate. Uh, it, it has a quite resemblance of the Arc in Paris and France, and it's built by Luton, Edward Luton, and as a part of their construction of Delhi. So, they built India Gate in 1930. And it was inaugurated in 1931 uh, for when the Lord uh, Curzon uh, when he arrived here. It's for Queen when George, King George, and Queen Elizabeth arrived in India. So it's for them. Yes, yeah, so that's the, Queen Elizabeth II's father, King George. Okay, that I don't know. Maybe. That, <laughs> that, that I know, man. I know. What? Watch, watch, watch the Queen. Watch the Queen. Okay. Eternal flame, uh, just in the memory of all the people who died in 1971 war. For, to pay the tribute, all the war heroes. On every Republic Day, the Prime Minister comes here, write down his thought. There is a book uh, just next to it on the right hand side. Uh, write down his thoughts, sign it, and it happens every year. So we're starving right now. We're gonna go eat something different, we're gonna eat southern Indian food. Where are we going? We're going in Haskas, a place named uh, Navedyam. And it's a delicious uh, South Indian food in Delhi. So it's a drastic difference between Northern yes. India and Southern India. Yeah, Southern uh, food is more plain, uh, less spices, and not as dry as he might have did, uh, and, eaten. And it's not so fried, you were saying? No, it's not fried. Great. It's okay. It's okay. How much? It's 200. This is like... The Tuk Tuk uh, stopping point or something like uh, We are entering at Haskas which is uh, very popular among youngsters. Uh, we usually come here to eat if we have to go out, meet our friends. A good hangout place in Delhi, a calm and nice Haskas village. And if you love deers, there is a deer park as well. Cheers, it's a hot drink. Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I can provide you, but it's really it's a mix of spices and Ooh, everything. But it's too hot. Yeah, and this is papadam. Papadam. Yeah, papadam. It's a, it's made out of rice, and you just eat it. <laughs> Cheers, dude. Cheers, man. You'll enjoy. Super hot. So this bread is completely different. It's like a cracker more. It's like a wafer. Mm. In the States, some places, some Indian restaurants I've been to, they have this. Mm -hmm. with a little like green sauce. So, do you want to have dosa? Do you want to try dosa? Can I get one mushroom masala dosa? Yeah, no, for sure it's lentils in here. Yeah. If they're, they're almost like puree, but like a very light portion. Mm -hmm. You can reorder. It's for free. Oh, that's masala dosa. That's um, maestro masala dosa and that's masala dosa. The batter is, it's made of rice batter, right? Uh, inside chili garlic chutney as well as potato. And same you have. And this is idli. It's also made out of rice and it, you steam it with some lentils, a sauce, coconut chutney made out of pure coconut, onion tomato and the mint one. Eating it with your hands? Yes, that's a proper Indian way. So you choose whichever chutney you like. For instance, I like, I don't, I'm not a good big fan of coconut one, so I just dip it with onion and tomato one and eat it. Delicious. Oh, but inside this stuff, okay. But here, we're just gonna put it in. What is this one? Coconut. Mmm, very nice. nice. Pure coconut. Here, go with that one. Get it, take some potatoes, mm -hmm. make it a nice roll, dip in your favorite chutney, a sauce, and then eat it. Delicious. Okay, so I'm gonna go inside the chutney. Just grab it like this, right? Yeah, I mean, you want to make a smaller piece. A smaller piece? Yeah. You get your favorite, my favorite is the coconut one. Mmm, definitely a lot lighter. This is like, not mashed potatoes, but like a mashed piece. Yeah. Okay, so potatoes with peas. Very like gooey tomato and onion. I mean, it's a huge piece, but. Mmm! That one is bomb. I like this one the most. I love that one. I, I love eating with my hands, by the way. 
It's like one of my favorite things. That's delicious. South Indian food is more healthy, not deep fried. Not, not spicy. Not spicy. Moderate ones, but usually plain. Okay. No, you will not taste different flavor within it. They're all very like light, they're balanced. Idli, okay. But here you just break it. You have to eat this okay. with the lentils. So break it, dip it, dip it with the lentils, and eat it. Mm. This almost tastes like matzo balls. It's actually really filling. <laughs> so coconut chutney, lentils. Oh man. <laughs> That's how you combine two flavors. You made a new flavor there. <laughs> this is something about Indian food. So you want me to put some of this, which is tomato, put it inside here? Yeah. Now take some coconut chutney. Okay, coconut chutney. Mix it well, that's it. Mix it well. Stir it until they are mixed. And now eat it. Whoa. What a delicious flavor. Mm. So on the left side of my brain I'm like tomatoes and this side is a coconut. <laughs> and then comes the lentils. Mm -hmm. It's a pan, a simple one, a sweet one. Oh yeah, one. sweet pan. I'll have a pan. Right? Cheers. Cheers. Mm. It's different, no? Mm -hmm. What is that? Sweet pan. A proper sweet pan. The pan is a leaf. But what's the sweet part? Like mint? Yeah, it's a mint with coconut, cloves, and cardamom. It's a Haskas village, and the way we, the place we will go, it uh, has a ruin from ancient times. I don't know much about the history, but you will you will like it. It has a very nice view of a lake. You can see a nice sun. People go there, usually lovers. This is Haskas, the second city of Delhi. It was built in the year 1296 by Aladdin Kilji. Aladdin Kilji. Aladdin Kilji. Not Aladdin. Aladdin. Aladdin Kilji. He was a Muslim ruler. It's a tomb. It's uh, the mosque as well as the water tank which is under it. That's it. The three things. Right outside the fort is like a very popular neighborhood, right? Yes. Uh, this, as I said earlier, this neighborhood is very popular amongst youngsters. People come here to eat, to meet friends, it's a quite popular meeting for a point around daily. So if you tell someone, meet them in house class, they know what you're talking about. We're almost done with the tour. We're going to our last site, and that is the tallest standing, free standing minaret in the world. Koto Minar. Koto Minar. What yeah. are we taking, Tutuk? Yeah, we are taking Tutuk. That's the best way. I'm so happy it's winter because I'm not melting. <laughs> Ah, uh, come and visit in uh, daily during summer. It would be somewhere around 45 degrees Celsius. How do you, Only. How do you do anything? <laughs> 45 degrees Celsius, that's like 110 Fahrenheit. Yes. You just, you're just melting. Tuk Tuk. Metro yeah. Tuk Tuk. Incredible India. I think for me it would be 20 rupees. And for me it costs like 500. I uh, know, for me it's 30 rupees. Huh? And for you. It would be 500. It's the rule set by the government of India, and you know it's sad, but foreigner has to pay more. Thousand five hundred. Thousand five hundred more. And sorry. Finally, we are here, the last stop of our day. That's Kutamina. You, as David has mentioned already, it's a world tallest freestanding minaret made out of totally with red stone. It's, they started constructing it around 11th century, but uh, it was finished in 12th century by the third generation of the same king who started it. And it was started by Kutub I, I Buck. So he was the main person. His son created the two other two stories, and the last one was created, uh, was uh, made by his grandson. The family tradition lives on. Yeah. <laughs> So it's an uh, iron pillar uh, made during the Gupta period and it's 98% uh, uh, wood iron which they use and till now it hasn't been rusted and it's standing all by, by itself. It hasn't been rusted from what year? From 11th century. What? Let's go see it. So there's our friend, security, helping us with the photos and this is probably the best spot to get the minaret 
This is by far my favorite historical site in Delhi. This is just beautiful. Look at this. It's gorgeous, actually. Minaret. You live here. Impressive. How to look? How to look? That's an amazing one. My man, we did it. Yes, finally. We saw the minaret. And everything. And everything. Take some great pictures. This is the most impressive historical structure in all of Delhi. It's gorgeous. Look at it. And definitely come here at sunset. And look at the security guard around here. He knows where the best spots are to take pictures. And don't forget to tip him. Come on, guys. Yeah, come on. You have to tip him. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this tour in partnership with Tours by Locals. Connecting traveler with local guides worldwide. <laughs> The local experience is the best experience. Oh yeah. So I hope you guys like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Comment below if you've ever been to India or Delhi. And subscribe to my channel for awesome travel content every week. See you guys on the next adventure. Good morning everyone, David Hoffman here from David's Been Here in Chaotic Delhi, India. I hope you're excited because today I'm taking you to eat some food with my friend Sparsh. He's a food blogger from Delhi. We're going to go eat at the Koral Bag area and after that we're going to go visit some of the Mughal Emperor tombs. Let's go eat some delicious food and explore Delhi. Largest city after Mumbai. It's recorded that there's like 12 million. I mean, there should be more like 18 to 20. It's a sea of people. It's never ending. And if you go to Old Delhi, you really see how many people in the area. It's just like overwhelming. Bro, how are you doing? <laughs> this is my boy Sparse. He's very shy, but let's do it. Let's go eat. This guy's nutty. <laughs> so where are we going? Where are we going? Uh, um corner. Um corner. Yeah. And what are we gonna eat there? Chole bhature and gulab jamun. Uh, gulab jamun is Indian sweet dish. Sweet dish? Yeah. And um, chole bhature is like um, our chole is chickpeas. Okay. Chole. And bhature. Uh, sorry, bhature is made with the bread. The bread. Yeah. Bhature. Okay. Yeah. So I, I ate that yesterday, but it's delicious. <laughs> so let's keep eating. <laughs> This place is crazy, it's so And this one, uh, shop, which serves vegetarian normally. This is a shop, it's called Om Corner, O-M Corner. There it is. Wow. Wow. Masterpiece here. So where do we post up? Anywhere? <laughs> this looks amazing. Pick up bite. And then we did it. In there like that? And then you just get a little piece. Oh, man. Not so spicy. No. I love the chickpeas. A little taco. This is how we do it. Get it like this. I'm overdoing it. I'm making like big pieces, but. Mm. It's not too spicy. Like five, six spices in it. Now it's getting hot. <laughs> Stick a little pickle, pickle in it. Is it pickle? Yeah. Mm. Oh my god. I eat this all day. This one is the best place in Delhi to eat this. The best place in New Delhi to eat this? Kind of. Yeah? Gulab mm. jamun. And what is it sweet? Yeah. Alright, let me see. You'll love it, maybe. Oh man. That's really hot. Mmm. <laughs> wow, it's like a flan. Ooh. Man, I need another <laughs> one of those. But I'm gonna I'm gonna end this meal with a bang. Here that's Wow. <laughs> It's really soft. Yeah, it is really soft. Let's do it. <laughs> nice, thank you, thank you. Walking distance away. One street away? Walking distance. Too many people. <laughs> it's too many people. Hey, how you doing? So we're gonna try some sweet dishes. Wow. I don't know. What do you suggest? Everything is so good. Hey, how you doing? I mean, what do you think? 
So what is this? Karachi halwa. Karachi halwa? Yes, sir. You have to unwrap it, okay? Yes. So it's like a jelly type dessert. There's a little nut there. There's uh, pistachios, okay. Mm. Awesome. 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 <laughs> no, man. Very gooey and yummy. Yes. Delicious. <laughs> so what's next? This is multi tula do. Multi tula. Bundi bundi. Bari bundi hoti hai? I don't know what that is, but I'm sure it's good. Mmm. <laughs> the taste is different. Quinoa, but like all mushed together into a cake. Yes. Oh my god. Mmm. <laughs> Raspberry. Raspberry. This is cow milk. Oh, cow milk? Yes. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Super sweet. Yes, sir. <laughs> Super sweet. I'll go with another one. <laughs> I love it. Do the barfi. Do the barfi. Almonds, kaju, pistachio. So a lot of nuts in here. Yes. Very, very chewy. I never tasted it before. Every single one, very different. Yes, sir. Milk ladu. Yes. And this one is rajbo. We're gonna end this uh, dessert fiasco <laughs> with two more rajbo. Yeah. Raj so it has saffron. It's different. Mm. You can taste saffron. A thicker, cakeish flan. <laughs> I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but it's like I'm good, dude. I'm good with this one. <laughs> Like, like a little ball. So it looks like a ball full of sugar. Oh my god, this is bomba. You know what it is? It's almost like a glazed donut. <laughs> it is. Right? Like a glazed donut. I guess this will be the last thing I eat for breakfast. Mm. Kill me with it. Yeah, come on. Come this on. is the zombie. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's your shop? Or? Yes, sir. Family shop? Yeah. Yeah, no, family. Yeah, yeah this is a we family are a shop. Family, oh. whole family. Oh, amazing. Thank you. Welcome. So now we're headed to one of the most famous tombs in all of India. It's called the Humayun Tomb. And that is where the Emperor Humayun from the Mughal Empire, not to be confused with Mongol, uh, is buried. Really the best way to get around Delhi is by using Uber. I think it's the best way to get around the whole world, but it is the best way and the most affordable and definitely the most, the safest. Delhi traffic is pretty insane right now. <laughs> Uh, something that's supposed to take us like 10 minutes is taking us about 45, but it's cool. We'll get there. <laughs> okay. uh, we are about to reach in two minutes. We've arrived to the UNESCO World Heritage Site, Hamaya Tomb Complex. This entire area is covered with tombs of emperors from the Mughal Empire, which is not to be confused with Mongol. The empire dated back between the 16th and 18th century and covered what is modern day India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh. And each one of these tombs is beautiful. So you can see that's the tomb right there. It's gorgeous, the colors are super beautiful. Yeah, this is definitely a must do when you're in Delhi. Isa Han, he was a nobleman okay. in the 16th century and Afghan Sultan of Delhi. So his family and his this is the oldest monument of this entire complex. Oh, okay, this is the oldest one. Oldest one in this area. So to get to the Humayun tomb, it's a big walk. It's at least, like I say, 10 minutes walking straight on this path. Not 10 minutes? Not 10 minutes? Five minutes. I don't know, it felt like we were already walking for five minutes. <laughs> Dude, it looks like Taj Mahal. And Mughal dynasty started in 1526 AD. In Mughal king has bowed this Humayun, but Humayun died actually of an accident, untimely death. He was uh, used to go to his library, but one day he hurriedly coming downstairs from the steps because he heard the azan, the call of the prayer from a neighborhood mosque. He missed the first prayer. Second prayer when it happened, he just hurriedly stood up and tried to come downstairs quickly, but he slipped. It actually got the two levels. Okay. They have got the first level where real graves are, and second level they have the replicas of the real ones. This, this complex is it's massive. So there are more tombs? Yeah. What? Yeah, this is gorgeous. Go through there? Oh, very red and white. So right here we have a Mayan's tomb. He's telling me that this is actually the replica, the actual tomb is underneath. Good to know, and over here in these hallways, 
there's tombs of his family members. And again, these are replicas because obviously they didn't fit in these tiny tombs. The tombs are underneath. This is a work of art for its time. I really had no idea that this was like what Taj Mahal is modeled after. As you can see, it resembles it. Looks very similar. The Taj Mahal is actually, you know, obviously white. But yeah, gorgeous. So luckily we came here early. Yeah. <laughs> This line is great. But now we're going to the Lodi Gardens. This is a huge city park. It's 90 acres in size. There's many tombs here from the Lodis. These are 15th century rulers of northern India and Punjab. They're going to be there in around four minutes. In Tuk Tuk, there's crazy chaos right now. The smell of gasoline is in my face. There's horns honking everywhere. There's honking nonstop. I mean, this is Delhi. This is real Delhi. So what's Bel Puri? Spices. Right from the spices? Yeah. And it's from Bombay? Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Very good. So this is Bel Puri. This is a Mumbai speciality. It is rice puffs, tamarind sauce, onions, potatoes, tomatoes, coriander, coriander. Uh, and that's shaves. And that's shaves? Yeah. Bel Puri. Mmm, very crunchy. Lots of flavor in here. The spice is coming. Mmm. <laughs> Almost everything in here is crunchy except tomatoes. I love it. Hey, when you go to Mumbai, eat this. He was telling me that he paid 60 right now, 60 rupees for this, but usually it's 30 rupees. The reason we're paying more is because we're at this park and this is like, you know, obviously a tourist attraction, so. This is the first structure we're visiting here in Lodi Gardens. It's called Baba Gumbad. It's a tomb that was built in the year 1490. It's the first stone structure built in Delhi, and they don't know who they built the tomb for because there's a grave, but there's no tombstone. Right across from it, there's the Shish Gumbad. Now let's go explore both these structures. Dude, what do you think about this tomb? <laughs> you gotta turn this guy into a non shot guy. <laughs> So the first tomb we saw was Bada Gumbad, which means bigger. This is Shish Gumbad, and this one has the remains of glazed blue ceramic tiles on the outside that give it the name is Shish Gumbad, which means glass dome. Let's go inside. We're walking over to Muhammad Shah's tomb. This is the oldest tomb in the gardens. It was built in the year 1444, and Muhammad Shah was the second ruler of the Siyad dynasty. So what I noticed is that most of these tombs, the interiors are very, very similar. Some of them have the real Tombstones, others have you know replicas and they have an actual tombstone under it. I mean this one is part of this prettiest structure in this entire garden. It's starting to get really hot. It was like 44 Fahrenheit this morning and now it's like 75. We just got in an Uber and we're headed to have the lunch at Kuncha Junction to have Kuncha. So what is that? Kuncha is basically Indian bread. Bread, Indian bread? Yeah. Okay. And it is served with uh Chole, chickpeas. With chickpeas, more chickpeas, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and salad and uh, chutney. Chutney? Yeah. Okay, very nice. And where is this by uh, Kanat uh, Place? It's near Bangasai Gurdwara. Ba so CP, so it's just Kanat Place. Okay. That is like the center, smack center of Delhi. This place is famous for its em Kulcha, Am Amrati Kulcha, and that is like a city in northern India. And that's the heart of the Sikh religion, and this food looks amazing. It's spicy, you said, right? Yeah, it is. Alright, well. Which one do you want to try? Masala, mix? Alright, so here we go. Kulcha. This is a typical dish from Amritsar. So I have a mix masala, cottage cheese, and mix. We're mix it with one of these. Chickpeas first? Wow. I'll try it now. This is really good. So I go for some more chickpeas. It's like a nice bread filled with cheese. Ooh, it's really good. I'm gonna go with the spicier one. I'm gonna break a piece here. This is my salad topping. Not so spicy. This is delicious. This is like a, maybe a three or four type of spice. Ooh, hot. Mmm. Wow. An explosion of cheese here. Maybe try it with some chickpeas. So, oh. my favorite right here. I'm getting full. Gotta save room for 
for dinner. <laughs> it's a good mix though. I love the music. Amrsa Kucha was, oh my god, so delicious. We're going to Kanap Place. That is the heart of Delhi. We just arrived here in Kanap Place and it's extremely crazy right now. So many people, so many cars, honking non-stop, and we're gonna eat some fire pan. If you guys don't know what fire pan, pan is a leaf, and basically they light it on fire with some stuff inside, they shove it in your mouth, and uh, yeah, it's basically, I tried the other day, it's pretty amazing. I'm back here, so why not try it again? Let's go eat some fire pan. Here we go, fire pan. It's really good, it's a leaf on fire. I definitely recommend trying this. A whole different experience. Can't stop. <laughs> I hope you like this video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. And subscribe to my channel for more travel content. Oh, that was good. A little intense though. <laughs>
Oh my god. <laughs> Anybody want more or should we go to the next place? Maybe leave me one piece. I'm sure I have it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you can go, you can pass. Amazing, we're fighting in every corner, man. Let's just go shopping, let's do whatever. <laughs> this is like a maze. This is seriously a maze. We gotta try everything. Uh, blood sausage. Blood sausage, Marcia. All right, I want one. Blood sausage, Tibetan style blood sausage. Marcia. Wow. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Every time. What? Try it. <laughs> that sauce is so hot. Ooh. Wow. Ooh, hot. It's too hot. It's too hot. It's too hot. Until she knew uh, what it was. I mean, I love blood sausage. I've been eating this my whole life. Every time I have a barbecue, we get like Argentinian style sausage, which is blood sausage, which is called Marcia. Look at how amazing this looks. It's a little spicy. I think the sauce is the, spot, is the spicy part, right? Yeah, the sauce is spicy. Oh, the taste. It's like a delicious Chinese Indian twist right there. That is bomb. The last piece, you don't want it? No, man, I'm having this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You will be pushing them. I'm going to be pushing everybody. You won't believe I drove a bike from here. Yeah? Yeah, <laughs> seriously. You drove a bike through here? Yeah. It's amazing. I love this market. In the daytime, it's more beautiful. Yeah, I'm sure everything is. So basically, what can we find here? I mean, everything. Everything. There's like shops, there's uh, jewelry shops, clothing, convenience store here. It's pretty amazing how tight these alleys are. They're like teeny. Badges. Badges. Tibet badges. Dalai Lama right there. It's kind of noodles. It's kind of noodles. It's kind of noodles. It's kind of noodles. You don't know what type of noodles this is? No. How much for this? 50. Salafi. So it's noodles with some leaves. By the way, this, this is the perfect thing we could have done today. Perfect, perfect. So we ran into this lady here and she's doing some noodles with spices called salafin. Salafin? Salafin. Salafin. Oh. Looks spicy. It looks spicy. It looks amazing. And delicious. Definitely you? Yeah. Hey, dude, I, I need it first. <laughs> you go, go, go. You never use chopsticks, man. Never. That's horrible. <laughs> oh my god. This is not gonna happen. Oh! <laughs> Just the way you're talking. I'm just gonna go. Mmm. <laughs> Ooh, it's so hot right now. Just do it, man. It's so hot. Look at these noodles. Wow. Ooh, it's hot. It's a spicy sauce. There's onions. There's nuts. Ooh, it's too hot. So I'm, I'm gonna drink some of it first. Mmm. Nice. <laughs> it's not so bad. But it is Simple, right? Yeah. This is a simple soup is nice. Hey, hey, I'm gonna share. Yes. So this beanie I brought is very thick. So I was looking for a thin one. What do you guys think about this one? Let's see how I do this. Like that? Is that supposed to be very Indian style? <laughs> I like it. How much is this? So after a little bit of negotiating, I got it down from 200 to 150. That's roughly what is that? Two dollars and 25 cents. It's a deal. Keep my head warm. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we going? Living room. Living room. Yeah. This is funny. <laughs> Traffic jams. How did they come in here with little scooters? It's crazy. There's a lot of restaurants, this is it, right here. So this is the living room. This is a mix between Indian, Mexican, and Chinese. And Chinese. So what we're we going with? Indian, right? Indian. Oh, Indian. We have North Indian too. North Indian too? Okay. Heaven on Earth right there. <laughs> Dal makhani. Dal makhani. Lentils, yeah. Lentils. It's overnight cooked lentils, black lentils. And then baked in butter and cream. It's really delicious. It's like a signature dish of uh, North Indian cuisine. So overnight cooked black. Yeah. Perfect. And then that is the bread. bread. It's wheat bread. Wheat bread? Wheat bread and it's uh, like a processed wheat. Okay. I don't remember I'll go with this one. Good? Yeah. Onions. Onions. Were they giving you bad bread? <laughs> so how do I do this? Put it on top? Just go with it. Just go with it. 
This is delicious. Yeah, it's, it's a mint sauce. Wow. And how do you do the chicken with, with this, right? No. <laughs> when you eat it in this, in this style chicken, you need to get your hands with No. It needs that chicken over your hand as it is Af Afghani chicken. It's like buttery sauce. Mmm. Oh man. Over the top yummy. Like too yummy. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is the most delicious sauce ever. <laughs> Some of this. Like straight up drink it. So just know this, when you come to India, don't try to be on a diet. <laughs> doesn't exist here. But really the best thing ever is to just get this bread, dip into the sauce. Mm. I like that way better than the dal. No? Oh, look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> the Afghan chicken amazing. was so good. My whole tummy is full of it. So let's see what else we try. Oh. <laughs> this is like this is scary to be here at night in that little corner. I don't know. That's a lawless little section. So one of the most amazing things about this place is these tiny little alleys. As you can see, this this connects the entire community. This. I'm gonna stay here, not let anybody pass. No, I'm joking. Let's keep going. <laughs> Oh, okay, so we accidentally stumbled upon this place and this place has moments. Oh my god. <laughs> Still open. Though. Like I said, everything was closed and this place is open. Amazing, okay. Let's have moments. Is it making it now? Two to three minutes, perfect. Three minutes. Everest Fast Food Center. Saved our day. <laughs> Saved our day for sure. Sit down, sit down. Uh, oh, oh. Oh. Okay. So here we have the momos, dumplings, this is dim sum. And uh, this, I don't know what that sauce is. Let me just try it. Okay. It's like a mayo, a little spicy mayo. And that's real spicy. Here we go. Mmm. Oh man, that spicy sauce is delicious. That's like sriracha. All right, so a little more sauce. Look at that. Oh, that spicy sauce. Mm. The first thing, the laughing, and this are my favorites. I love them some. Oh, what are you doing, buddy? <laughs> really good, right? Tasty? Mm. We'll split this one. I thank God that we had this meal because this is the best way to end this video. The chicken is off. Chicken is in. Whatever. It's just oh dumpling. Too much? Too much spice? <laughs> <That's spicy. laughs> Alright, so I hope you love this nice street food tour of the Tibetan market. It's uh, full of Tibetan people selling, you know, crafts, clothing, a billion little stores, super windy little alleys. The food, the street food is amazing. I'm sure there was many more, but we got here a little late. If you love this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content coming every week. See you on the next adventure. What's up everyone, David Hoffman here from David's Been Here. It's like seven in the morning. It's very small here in Delhi. But today I'm taking the high speed train down to Agra. This train runs every day except Friday. It's an hour and a half journey. It departs at 8.10 in the morning from this train station. Let's go to Agra and see the Taj Mahal, one of the seven wonders of the world. This is my fourth wonder. This place is insane right now. So many people. So I got the so the best way to get to Agra is by taking the Gatiman Express. This is India's fastest train. It takes around 90 minutes to 100 minutes to get there. It runs at 99 miles per hour. Uh, it operates every single day except Friday. And the reason it doesn't run Friday is because the Taj Mahal is closed that day. This train was basically built to take people to the Taj Mahal. I'm an executive class, which is the highest class they have. It cost me 1,500 rupees, which is roughly around 20 US dollars. 
The only people here are tourists that are going for the day to see the Taj Mahal. So we should be there in around 100 minutes. I'll see you guys in Agra. Barantas. <laughs> There's breakfast right here. Hey, thank you. I slept so well. <laughs> We've arrived in Agra. And here's my boy. Welcome to Agra. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, look at this, son. <laughs> Too much. Hello, my name is Shanu. I'm from Agra, your tour guide for today. Yeah. And this is in partnership with Tours by Locals. Yeah. So today's gonna be an exciting day. We're gonna see the Taj Mahal, <laughs> one of the seven wonders of the world. It's my fourth. Fourth wonder. Fourth wonder, yeah. Fourth wonder. I'm super excited. And Taj Mahal is the best one. I mean, it's the most beautiful by far. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Today you're going to be in the better side of the world. <laughs> well, there are two types of people in the world. First, who's in Taj Mahal, and second, who's not. <laughs> okay. So basically, that train was created for tourists that Tourist, want to come yeah. see the Taj. Yeah, yeah. It's a new train started last year, I think. And there was a one train before it set up. The it leaves 6 a.m. in the morning from New Delhi station and reach here 8 a.m. Okay. That train and this one, another one started for a tourist especially, the Gadiman Express. So these two trains are very famous. What's a GMB? GMB is, I think, good morning breakfast. Good morning breakfast? <laughs> Perfect. Because I didn't have breakfast and I slept the whole ride, we're here at GMB breakfast to have some Northern Indian cuisine. This is the wheat flour. Okay. And uh, pop, uh, stuffed with the potato and lantern with lots of spices. And now he's going to deep fry. Agra is famous for this breakfast? For this breakfast. This is a typical Agra breakfast. The whole India knows about it. So the balai and the potato curry. Potato with the curry and lots of spice. Two for you, two for me. Curry is always go with something. With the rice or with the bread or with the naan. So we'll break this balai. Hot! We love hot. Always. All food hot. after hot. Yeah. So this is like a chickpea bread. Oh yeah. The lanterns, spices. I haven't had bread like this yet. So this this here. This Agra. Here. Agra, Agra. Agra is famous for it. This, this is called Badai Sabji. Sabji is a vegetable curry. Mm. So Agra is famous for it. This is coated cheese, see, see. Yeah, they call it cheese right there. Wow. This is delicious. Mm. A tiny spice, like yeah. a tiny bit. Okay, they call it cheese. Mm. Potato is here king of vegetables. Yeah. Whatever curry we have mostly, they have potato. So always potato. Always potato. Every Indian like to finish their food with a sweet. So in breakfast today we have a sweet called jalebi. The jalebi is a white fruit, deep fried in oil, and then dipped in a sugar. So this comes jalebi. It's a very sweet and very lovely. All right. So I've eaten it about three times, but I can't get enough of this. So it's fried dough with concentrated sugar. It tastes almost like honey, but it's definitely concentrated sugar. Oh my God. Crunchy, sweet, and delicious. What's all for you, man? <laughs> okay, it's that front brother. <laughs> this is called masala tea. In India, when tea came to India, we got different version. We mixed milk in it. So it's called masala tea. We have clove in it, cardamom in it, and some other spices. It's really hot, probably boiling. All right, we have to wait a few minutes. <laughs> uh, this is the East Gate Road. We have three gates to get inside the Taj Mahal. And this is an East Gate we are going to take. So we are going to visit Taj Mahal now. And this Taj Mahal was built during 1631 to 1653. And it was built by the fifth Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in memory of Dilaf Rai Mumtaj Mahal after her death. But she died when she was giving birth to her 14 kids on 17 June of 1631. The emperor became very, very sad because he used to love a lot to his life. Then he decided to make a, such a beautiful monument in memory of their love to remind the world how great love was they. Then its work started in December 1631. A man from Turkey was the main designer of the Taj Mahal. His name is Ustad Isha Khan. Just so you know, it's uh, how much? A thousand uh, rupees for foreigners. For foreigners, 40 rupees. It's a little unfair, no? <laughs> it's a discount for a poor people. I know, I know, it's okay. When you pass this gate and look at the Taj Mahal the first side, you are not going to forget your whole life. Wow. Well, so are you ready to feel the magic? I'm ready. 
I'm ready as I can be. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> How's this? It's Look stunning, at this. it's stunning. It looks like some picture against the sky or some portrait against the sky. Isn't it? 30 to 35,000 people come here every day and during Christmas holidays or New Year holidays about 80,000 people come here every day. There's a lot of people here. A lot of people. Yeah. And there's every day. Every day. What you see in pictures and video you don't do justice is really very massive and big when you come here you find it here. But when you look in the Taj Mahal it's pleasurable to your eyes because they have used a golden ratio you know God's ratio the 1.618 ratio you find in human body in the leaves in nature the same ratio used in ancient architecture and the same ratio used in the Taj Mahal. If you want to get professional photos done there's photographers all around like this guy and uh, so it's 2,000 for 20 photos with the digital copy. So that's not bad. So 2,000 rupees, 20 professional photos, digital copy. Sit down there. I don't know, we're trying every single way. Yeah. <laughs> that's the last point. <laughs> I'm trying to survive today. We're going to make it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. <laughs> we'll do it. So everybody who enters Taj Mahal has to put this on? Yeah. Our most of the clients say that Taj Mahal has got some feminine character. So it changes color and mood as a woman changes mood at a different time. Taj Mahal height is 80 meters, one of the tallest buildings in India. Main doom itself is a 40 meter, half of full height. And there's a double doom structure we have used here. It's an inner doom and outer doom to increase the size of the building and to make it more strength. And the base structure of Taj Mahal is made of red bricks with lime mortar and from top it's a studded with white marble, about six to seven inch thick marble is studded from the top. So marble is just an ornamentation from the top. It's not the base structure. So you can imagine how difficult it is to do all carving work just by hand. The marble is 100% non porous It's very tough, very strong. It's prohibited to take photos or video inside the museum. So this is as far as I can take you. The museum was out of this world. Those marble pieces are just incredible. Yeah. When you walk out, look what you walk into. Oh my god, <laughs> this is impressive. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm not very tired today. I'm a little sick. I ate too much in Delhi. <laughs> we are in the backside of Taj Mahal and here we have a Yamuna river. Second holy river of India after Ganges is coming from Himalaya via Delhi. And he joined Ganges 500 km east from here. In Delhi, the same river is there and river is changing, uh, shifted for a mile, but it not changed its course, it's, it's still here by the Taj Mahal. And there is a, a beautiful garden on the other side, it's called Mahatab Bagh, it's called Moonlit Garden. Often emperor used right to there. go there, right there, yeah. often emperor used to go there and could, uh, enjoy the moonlight view of the Taj Mahal. Wow. And right there is Aga Fort. Where Emperor Shah Jahan was house arrest by his own son. From there, he used to see the Taj Mahal and remember his wife. He died there in 1666. Then his daughter Jahan Abhi and brought his dead body by river and got buried here in the Taj Mahal. So now you can see the two tombs inside. One was there in the center, exact in the center. It was the Empress tomb, and one in the other side, the bigger tomb was a man's tomb, was a Shah Jahan's tomb. So that's the only one thing in Taj Mahal which is not symmetric in balance. Some, say. Yeah, some people say he's a victim, nothing perfect except God. He did something perfect and in last he himself made it imperfect. He broke the symmetry of the Taj Mahal. He had to be paired with his wife. Yeah. Come on. So we did it. We saw the Wait Taj Mahal. Much. Yeah. For sure the prettiest of the Seven Wonders. It's gorgeous. It's massive. I mean, we really need like, I'd say you need an hour and a half to two hours to really see it, explore it, take photos. I mean, it was incredible. Uh, this is my fourth wonder. I'm only missing three. Now you are in the better side of the world. <laughs> you, you've seen the Taj. <laughs> well, now we are going to the marble inlay live demonstration where you can see how they cut the marble, how they cut this, the stone and how they fix it inside. This art is unique to Agra. It's only found here. It's ancient art. It uh, originated in Turkey or Persia. And, but now it's surviving only in Agra, you can see here. So here you could see the same art which you have enjoyed on the walls of the Taj Mahal. There you would have seen such patterns done, but there exactly you cannot know how it was done. So it's very interesting and informative to know about. Because up till today we are using the same tools, same technique. Even these artists, they belong to the same families who work for the Taj Mahal. It's their ancestors, forefathers, they work for the Taj It is now their 13th and 14th generation. And the name of the art is Pachikari. Pachikari means to do inlay of such gems 
on the marble. The green one is malachite. Yeah, this is malachite. The blue one is lapis lazuli. Orange one is cornelian. This is the one which was the favorite of Taj Mahal queen. The one through which light goes through. The sky blue one is turquoise. So to do inlay of such stones, it is called as Pachi Kali. They always perform this art in a pair, two people. First one he is the shaper to give the shape to the stones with the help of this bead. It's like a grinding bead. One by one he give the shape. It's one petal of a rose flower. And second one is the carver who do the cavities, make the holes and then fix them inside with it. That took almost uh, 45 days to do wow. for the two artists. Such piece we sell for 28,000 rupees. So now we're going to go see some of the finished products. We're going upstairs, there's like the VIP treatment. He's telling me this is the best one they have. Where is it? Whoa. Beautiful collection of those artists here. This is incredible. I love the elephants. How much are the elephants, the black one? All right, well, I'll take that one then. <laughs> How much for that one? That is uh, 1.25 million rupees. I don't know what that is, but it Around sounds like 100,000. 18,000 18,000? All right, so I loved it. That's a great lesson. I think it's, this is like a must do after you visit Taj Mahal because <laughs> I mean you need to see how they really made this and what type of work and you know how long it took. Yeah. It's crazy. You need a great patience and determination. If you make any minor mistake, it's gone. So it's you gone. need to start over. Next we are going to the Fatehpur Sikri and this is called a Mughal Enigma. Uh, Mughal mystery because Mughals, the great Mughal emperor, lived here just for 14 years and then they left. So this is a very beautiful fort and palaces we are going to explore. So it's a 40 minute drive, we're gonna relax and we'll see you in about 40 minutes. So we arrived to Fatehpur Fate Sikri. Fatehpur Sikri, yes, it's a city of victory. It was founded by Emperor Akbar the Great, the third Mughal emperor, the city of victory. So it takes five minutes by bus to get to the complex, it costs 500 rupees. Rupees. So we are here at the Fatehpur Sikri. This is another World Heritage Monument in Agra, under UNESCO. It was built by Emperor Akbar. Akbar, the real founder of Mughal dynasty, who knew Indian culture and he knew how to rule in India. He was the one who established a secular kingdom in India. He married two Hindu ladies, a Persian lady, and Christian lady, and gave message in the local public that he's from here. This is a completely different palace. I mean, look at this red sandstone. It's beautiful. It's very open courtyard. This feels very like China, at the Forbidden City, just very open. This was a very private from the very outside. This area is Haram. Haram is a forbidden place where only Emperor lived with his wives, concubines. So it was a little spot. So now outside people were allowed. So right here we have the gardens. And the reason that they built these gardens was because... Because they came from Samarkand, from Uzbekistan, the cool area. And India is very hot during 8 months, 40 degrees Celsius it goes up. So they had a beautiful garden with the canals in between, so that they could full breezing, fresh air. Also their building have a higher roof, cross ventilation. You can feel it. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's so hot out there, right here it's like, drops 20 degrees or something. <laughs> so right here we have the concubine, this is where the emperor would have his wives, daughters, or wife, daughter, and then all his concubines. This is one of the most beautiful palace here, built by Emperor Akbar for his Hindu wife Jodhabai. He married to a Hindu princess of Amir in Jaipur, and he built entirely Hindu palace for her here on a Haveli-based architecture. Haveli, rich people in India in all time had the Haveli, had the big open courtyard in the center, one gate for entry and exit for security purpose, and the rooms in uh, at the corner for a different use. This is no small house, this is like giant. Yeah. <laughs> this is a giant palace. So this one here I believe to be her summer palace. It had ventilation, artificial leak in the back. Shano's telling me that when it rains, not a single drop of water stays in the courtyard because it's built on a slope. So the middle, right there, is built like that. And then it goes down here, boom. And that is it, my friend. Yes. Great day. Great day. So two UNESCO World Heritage Sites, one yeah, seven two. wonder of the world. Yeah, and one is a Mughal mystery, Mughal enigma. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sorry. Here on the floor you can see one diagram. It's a game of Pachisi. Pachisi is a similar to the chess developed in India. And Amper used to throw dice there in the center. And instead of pieces, they were using beautiful women's and different color here, there, there, there. Uh, <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> this place is awesome. Awesome. You awesome. enjoyed it, huh? Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, obviously I never had Taj Mahal, but I've never seen this or heard about this, so it's like a different thing. So I hope you love this video. If you've ever been to the Taj Mahal or ridden the high speed train or been to Fatih Four Secret, please leave us a comment below. Please like this video if you loved it and subscribe to my channel for awesome travel content. And towards my locals, the only way to do it. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Thank you. everyone David Hoffman here from David's been here in Agra India and I'm here with Samid and today we're gonna go see the Agra fort we're gonna see some gardens what else we're we gonna do a baby Taj baby Taj and Agra fort okay the palace of the royal family I'm ready okay. uh, maybe I, I don't eat too much today <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I thought there was more monkeys and I only saw a few in Delhi I didn't see that much now we are entering to the baby Taj the real name of the building is Itmat Otola this is the finest architecture, uh, similar like the Taj Mahal, but it was built earlier than the Taj Mahal. We believe that they got idea to make the Taj Mahal from this building that time. I had no idea this place even existed. I guess they don't promote it. India, most of the buildings you can see, it was built by an empress actually, like Taj Mahal, Agra Fort, Red Fort, but this is the building which was built an, by an empress. That is a big deal during that timing actually. Baby Taj was built by the fourth Mughal emperor's wife. Her name was Noor Jahan. The construction of this building was begun in 1622 and was completed in 1628. It was built by an empress when her father passed away. His name was Itmat Uddawla. You can see the main entry to the building, just we have one actually. And rest of the gates which you can see there, these all are just to balance it from all the side actually. This is one of the main thing about the Mughal architecture. They balance the building from front to back and from left to right also. Okay, so basically those gates have no purpose except to give balance to the complex. This is beautiful. Look at this. These are the writing of the Quran in Arabian language. Start from the right and to the left. Here you can see even the flooring is decorated over here. And uh, the roof also over here. Mm -hmm. But uh, the thing is in the Taj Mahal, the roof and flooring hasn't been decorated actually. So this building is more intricate from outside and inside as well compared to the Taj Mahal. The person who is buried there, you can see on your left hand side, his name is Itmatu Dola, to whom her daughter, she built this building and next to him exactly in the center, her mother, she is buried here and rest of the family members next to them. Yes, according to the Hinduism, we have the three main rivers, we call Ganga, Yamuna, Saraswati, okay, all these three rivers are the sacred rivers for the Hindu people in India. So this is one of the sister, the Yamuna we have in Agra and we have in Delhi as well. Like the Taj Mahal in Agra, it is located on right hand banks of the Taj Mahal and the Baby Taj as well. From here and then when the water is going to fill up, then that water channel will start moving and this water channel will start moving from this way. So we saw the Baby Taj, this is an incredible building. And most people that come to see the Taj Mahal never come here because they either come really fast for the day. Yeah, you are right actually. When they visit this for same day trip, so they don't have enough time because it takes around four hours for them to come from Delhi and then they go back, it takes four hours again for them. Exactly. Yeah. So roughly we have idea 20% to which they visit this building. Well. And where are we going next? Now we are heading to the baby, uh, Mehtab Park. Mehtab Park? Mehtab Park. And what's Mehtab Park? Mehtab Park is the place from where we have beautiful view of Taj Mahal actually. Okay. We call full moon garden as well. So it's a garden? Yeah, that's a garden with that, the view of Taj Mahal. That's where the emperor used to, to hang out sunset, that's what they told me. Yeah, actually that is the place where the emperor is supposed to make one more Taj Mahal. Okay. Yes, that is the place and it is located next to the Yamuna River. Let's go, I'm excited. <laughs> This is the village of Agra. The name of the village is Kachpura. So 200 rupee to enter? Yeah, 200. Okay, 200 rupee. This place is known as the Mehtab Bagh. 
Actually, this place was built by the Mughal Emperor Humayun. Humayun was the second Mughal ruler who came to India. So during that time, they were using this garden to spend their time during the evening time. Taj Mahal construction was going on. The Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan he did the restoration over here, from where he could sit and can see the construction of the Taj Mahal. And this is the same place where he is supposed to bury himself, and he is supposed to make one more Taj Mahal. But at the time the construction was begun, he was imprisoned by his son. So that's why only the foundation is left here. And this is now a place very famous for the sunrise and sunset view of the Taj Mahal as well. Here we have the foundations to the second Taj Mahal. The emperor is going to build the second one right across the river. This one's going to be black. As you can see, this is probably the best view of the Taj Mahal. I actually like it better than the inside. Obviously being over there is, you know, a must, but this is really, really beautiful. Yeah, we are heading to the Agra Fort now. So Agra Fort is a place where the royal family used to live, and this is where the emperor who built the Taj Mahal died. He was imprisoned by his son, and that's where he spent his last days. This is the fort? This is the fort. It's huge. It is. 2.5 kilometers in diameter. We've entered Agra Fort. This yeah. is where the emperor used to live with his family. Yeah. yeah. Actually, this is the fort where the emperor is not going to live alone. Here, he used to live with his family members, some relatives, and the private soldiers. Here, you can see the security was very important for them. That's why they cannot live alone. Like you can see the example over there, that is the watchtower, where the soldiers are going to stand and keep watching outside. So, whoever is going to attack or to the fort, so they can get them very. It was built between 1565 to 1573. It took 8 years to complete it. The area of the fort is 2.5 km and that time the cost of the fort was 30 million rupees. Everything here looks amazing. It is. It's like, like here as I told wow. you that we had drawbridge over there for the security reason. So they can protect themselves. And the second thing which you can notice here is we don't have steps to go up to the fort actually. We have sloping over here. Why we have the sloping here? Like in case if somebody is going to attack to the fort, so they can make it slippery easily. So they used to put the oil here. You can see the spaces in the wall on left hand side and right hand side. If the oil is not enough, then they are going to fire them with the bow and arrow actually. Wow. Again, this is for the security reason. So there's three gates. First gate, second gate, yeah. third gate. This is the palace of the Jahangir. It was built by his father, Akbar. So you can see there, that is the bath tub. Bath tub, he used to take bath. Now it is kept in front of the people. But during the time of the Mughal Empire, it was kept inside there. So he's not going to take bath in front of the people altogether, actually. I didn't expect him to be taking a shower outside in front of everybody. But I guess I just did it so you can see it here, yeah, right? absolutely, because the British lived here in this fort for 90 years. That time on the roof, we had a real golden painting up there. If you can see there, actually, something has been left. Most of things has been naturally destroyed. We saw there that was the palace of the Jahangir, actually. So I explain you about the open courtyard over here. That is the place where that time they had a group of ladies dance. We called Mujra. Like 15 to 20 girls are there, they are singing and dancing together. That was kind of competition actually. So during that time we have the, the according to the Islam, the royal family ladies, they cannot come in front of the normal people without covering their face. So that time we had a parda system. Parda system means they have to cover their face. So to enjoy this activity, we have the small arches over there. And that time they had the glasses in the arch from where they could see, but the people could not see them actually. And up there, open places is there, kind of thrown there, kind of thrown there. Right here we have the drainage system. You can see the water would come down here, go into here, and then from here it will go out to the moat, and the moat connects to the river. This, then this is the Jodha Palace because the summer and winter palace of the Jodha here. Yes. Very confusing. They have like four palaces within one palace. No, different palaces. But I mean, for me, for me, each other. yeah, because they're all connected. Okay, yes, okay. Yes. Uh. So, so at the uh, at the same time, uh, it's not like only the single emperor or empress is living here. So rest of the empress and empress used to live here as well, actually. Here you can see this is the main attraction of the fort. Here, this is the place where the son kept his father in prison for last eight years. So when he was about to die, he requested son, please bury myself next to my wife. Then his son let him bury next to his wife there actually. In the Taj Mahal? In the Taj Mahal actually. So when he was imprisoned, his daughters Jahanara and the Rosa Nara used to take care of him. Here you can see that uh, this is the place, this is the house arrest, this is not a normal jail. 
for a normal imprisoner actually house arrest means he is free to move in the court the same white marble you can see here the same white marble was there in the taj mahal so this is anguri bag anguri bag means the grapes garden so we believe that they used to make wine with the grapes so most of the mughal dynasty they were the muslim we believe that uh, according to the islam liquor is haram for them but one of the ruler was there his name is jahangir the fourth mughal emperor he believed that the wine doesn't harm him so this is one of the evidence which shows that they used to consume wine as well the name of this place is diwan e aam diwan e aam is the place of hall of audience actually so that time for justice they used to create a a uh, meeting twice in a week actually so whoever is looking for the justice they can come in front of the king and the king will give them the solution so according to their designation they are going to sit there up there between the pillars the king on ground floor the place where we have the table the place for the prime minister and rest of the designation on the floor over there and the normal audience over there and one by one they are going to send them for the justice here this is the most amazing courthouse i've ever seen yes <laughs> that was well organized it's like wow This is this is impressive. That was Agra Fort. It really was one of the most beautiful and incredible fortresses I've ever seen. I mean, I've seen some incredible stuff in Europe, but this was out of this world and just the red sandstone just makes it look so beautiful. And you have some views of the Taj Mahal. And uh yeah, so now we're headed to have lunch. And at lunch, we're going to try the most famous dessert in India. It's called peta. and that is only found here it, it's called peta peta yes peta peta oh <laughs> This is called Master Chef Restaurant, one of the best restaurants in Agra. Making like a mushroom dish and getting the peta. Um, I have also some curd so I can like coat my stomach a little bit because I've been eating too much street food lately. And I got sick yesterday, so I'm trying to get better before I eat any more street food because you know it's still I think two weeks of the trip and I'm gonna eat a lot more street food for sure. Here we have it. It's a vegetarian dish. It's basically. Mushrooms with peas, green peas, potatoes, onions, and this is non bread. They had chickpeas. Oh wow, that's incredible! Green peas and mushrooms, okay. it's fantastic. I love it. And this is uh, non, but made with chickpeas. It is. Missy roti. Wow, it's amazing. Delicious. I love that it's vegetarian, so I'm gonna do it the way they do it, right? You put it all on. Mmm. Oh man. And right here we have the curd. They said this would be really good for my stomach. It's nice, but I don't like the smell. Here we go. Please go ahead. Get that. Oh my god, it's hard. It's like a hard as a rock. Very sweet. It is. A lot of sugar here, no? Mm, delicious. It's a very, very sweet dish. Really sweet. I mean, it's like rock hard then chewy inside. Pretty good. Take care. Thank you. This is awesome. We did it, man. Great day. Hey, so we saw Baby Taj, the gardens. We saw Agra Fort and we actually tried Peta finally. I was hearing about this for years. Peta, Peta, Peta. Guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Leave us a comment below if you want to come see the Taj Mahal or come to Agra or India and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. See you in luck now.